Hey, what's up everybody? I'm actually in the office right now, but it's a great spot to make the video. Today's video is how to mold on your Rocket Bunny kit. Be forewarned, this is actually a very expensive process. And most people actually just sell off their cars and junk, so it's not for everybody. I actually broke it down to several steps, so I hope you guys can follow along. It's very simple, but time consuming. Well, the very first step is to gather all the information and items you need. Some things you might need, coils, bags, tow arms, wheels, tires, and money. You want to sit down and think of all the junk you need before you cut your car. It's a big deal, so plan ahead. I forgot to mention trailing arms. Basically, trailing arms, you can actually physically move your whole setup forward or backwards to have better clearance around the arches. Here is the most common one issue, so that's why you need a trailing arm. And it kind of depends on how much, how low you go, how aggressive. So there's so much more variables. I made a decent video explaining Rocket Bunny wheel fitment right here. You can actually copy me, but optimistically figure out your own wheel fitment after you watch the video. It's a very straightforward, simple explanation. So after you figure out what you want, then get what you need. And then you can price out. Shout out to Cosmo Racing Wheels. Please make them in 5x100 and lower offset. Please and thank you. This concludes step one. All right, we're gonna rush into the bank and make a deposit. <laughs> Step two, you have to cut your car. This actually makes me terribly sad because I wanted to make a video like Nguyen. From start, from finish, from cutting to welding, to install, to paint, to finish, to turbo, to dyno, to destroying Ferraris. But I lost all my everything. Okay, back to cutting. The front is stupid easy. Here's me cutting someone else's car. This is Miguel's. It took maybe an hour or two. It's really simple. You just mark out what you need to cut, go at it. Also, make sure you cut below here. The rear, on the other hand, you require some welding. I highly recommend watching B for Build or Speed Academy. The link in the video right here. Even though step two is about cutting, I actually personally cut my car differently because how I molded it. I will explain that a little bit later. This concludes step two. So this is the famous intersection where the Tokyo Drift car drifted up here. And they went that way. Here we go. GTR! All right guys, so step three is actually sanding the backside of the body kit. It isn't very common or, I guess, obvious that most people know how to sand the backside of the body kit. But this is one of the most important steps because it's actually pretty unique to making this fitment even better. Ideally, you should do this for every Rocket Bunny or kit you throw in the car. But the main process of step three is to sand the backside of the body kit. Imagine it like this house of cards, saying this is your car and this is the fender. See how it's normally a little that much of a gap. So if you're actually sanding the back side of it, sanding it off and off and off and off and off, sanding it off so you have a much more smoother finish. So when you actually go on top, then it can flush, sit flush with the fenders. A good two to three inches in the back side is ideal for a more fine finish. But the main focus is to make the tip where it touches the car thinner. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it is not very obvious for most people. How much sanding is subjective? Here's what I did. Gluing the kit to the car. It's very much so everything is all prep work when you're doing body. So you actually have to sand off the clear coat, give it some more meat so it can actually stick to it. The glue to use will be in the description. Pretty much everything will be in the description. Read the description. And now you have to drill in your body kit. The main focus is to make it flush as possible. So it doesn't matter how many holes you throw into the damn thing, make sure it's flush. So as you can see from this, I made a million extra holes that I didn't even need. 
but that wouldn't matter because those holes will be filled later. This concludes step four. Step five, fiberglass. This step is actually pretty intimidating if you actually never played with fiberglass. So I highly recommend playing with another part first. A good example is probably the dash in the car. Try to fiberglass it together and make it one piece. So here's the back side of the dash. I did want to layer of fiberglass, but you kind of get the basics idea of it and how to use it like this, and it actually will stay on it forever. Yeah, so that's pretty solid. Yeah. Well, let me know if you guys wanted to uh, how to do this, but now it's one piece smooth carbon fiber red. Playing with fiberglass is actually pretty easy. It's basically paper mache. You have your glue, which is your resin, and you have to mix it, which is maybe a two to one ratio, whatever it may be. So resin, epoxy resin, and hardener. And then you mix it up and you brush it on with the brush. It's very important to make sure you do not have any bubbles in your resin. So by doing that, you can add a little heat and it will pop up most of the bubbles, or it just makes it really slowly. The size of your fiberglass strips aren't really important, but a good two to three inches thick and long is actually pretty effective. Ideally, it's a good idea to overlap them 50 to 60% of each other, so they fold right on top of each other, the next one of the next one. Depending how much fiberglass you want to use, it's also subjective. It's whatever you want. We went with four or five layers. Nonetheless, this concludes step five. All right, get ready for the most time consuming part, sanding. This part, you use the body filler, which is the body filler and hardener, and you mix it up really well. The consistency should be almost like a light cake mix. Using a flat tool, you just spread it on like cake, like this. Remember all the extra holes on the body kit? Yeah, don't worry about it now. It's all filled up. And then once it's dry, you sand it off. And then repeat, and then repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. All right, using your 80 grit, sand it off and make sure it looks good. And now you're done. Walk away. Ah, you wish. You will constantly be repeating this step over and over and over again to make sure it's smooth. After a certain point, you can actually spray a primer on it and you can see the unlevel areas. Any imperfections will be shown. The primer, you can actually see any imperfections that will show up. If it shows up on the primer, it's gonna show up in your paint or your wrap or whatever it is. So you can see where the imperfections are and then fix it. This may sound like a continuation of the last step, but it's actually a necessary step to actually go back and double check because what you can't really see with your eyes you can see with the paint hey guys i'm actually going to end the video here this is pretty much it you you already sand it to 80 grit and then you're going to go switch to 220 and you keep going until everything is perfect and then from there you prep the car to paint and then with the sanding block and all that goodness and then just get the car painted or wrapped and then you're done Insert stance video, Instagram, and you are done. I hope you guys enjoy the video. It was a lot of effort to make. I'm too goddamn busy. Well, hopefully next month or this month video will be out. And it'll be chunk I hate about my rocket bunny. And I actually have a lot. But it's okay. Enjoy. Subscribe, like, comment. Thank you very much. It's not worth it. Really, white body isn't worth it. You're, you're, what is it? 65 millimeters, two inches, an extra two inches of your foil car, all this work, it's really not worth it. But my car is beautiful. I can stare at it all day. It's all up to you. If you really want to do it, just go ahead and do it. Do what you want. It's your build. <laughs> Say bye, YouTube. <laughs> bye, YouTube. Okay. Repeat after me.
Repeat after me. Repeat after me. Frank Hong is the greatest in the world.